Today we're going to be talking about the fuel system in our Cessna. Our Cessna is fuel injected. We have two tanks in our Cessna and they are actually our wings. We have a total of 56 gallons in our Cessna, but we can only use 53 of those gallons. It's split evenly between the two tanks as you can see here. Now, speaking of our Cessna, it comes down, it's gravity fed to the fuel selector valve, the fuel reservoir, the auxiliary fuel pump, the fuel shutoff valve, down to the strand, and then we have our engine driven fuel pump goes to our mixture control, which is where we can regulate how much fuel we're adding to the engine, and then that goes into our fuel distribution valve, which distributes it to the fuel injectors. The extra fuel travels back up through a check valve into the fuel reservoir. Now, what type of fuel can we use in our system? We use 100 octane low lead. Low lead means there's a small amount of lead in it to help with the lubrication of the engine. And the color is light blue, so if you were to strain your Cessna when checking for water, rust, or debris in your fuel, and you saw that it wasn't light blue, you might want to check in your POH that it is a suitable fuel for the Cessna. We also have stickers on top of the wings that will tell you the color of the correct fuel. And we stop because when we're flying an airplane, we can't pull over on the side of the road. If we had water in our fuel and that got into our engine, water is not flammable, so it will not have combustion. And you might ask, how would we know if there's water in the fuel? Well, prior to flying during our pre-flight, we drain our Cessna's fuel tanks. There's five drains on each tank, and we have three underneath the nose of our Cessna. One on the fuel selector valve, one on the fuel reservoir, and one in the strainer. The strainer is very important because it's the lowest point in our system, and water is actually heavier than fuel, so it would sink to the bottom of the system. And when we're talking about fuel, you notice we have two fuel pumps on the Cessna. We have an auxiliary fuel pump, which is powered by a switch inside the cockpit, and that will help us prime our engine. Otherwise, during flight, we do not use it. Our engine-driven fuel pump provides fuel to the fuel distribution valve, which then goes into the cylinders. If we were to have an engine-driven fuel pump failure during flight, we could turn on our auxiliary fuel pump, and that will allow us to get back to the airport. All right, so this is how we sump the Cessna. There's five on each wing, and then there's three on the bottom of the engine. So how we sump it, we have one of our containers here with a little needle, and you basically poke it inside here. And you just let enough fuel to come in, usually for a couple of seconds of something on each side, but I'm going to fill it up a little bit more for this demonstration. And you can see all the fuel coming into the container, and we will check it under a light to make sure that there's no contaminants inside. See, we have to see there's no bubbles. It has that bluish tint to it, which means you have the correct 100 low lead octane fuel, right? And there's no dirt or other contaminants inside. We know that the fuel system is clean and ready to go. So now I'll show you what happens if there's water inside. So I'm gonna pour some water in. And now, Water is heavier and denser than the fuel, so you're gonna see it collects on the bottom, and you, if you look closely, there are bubbles indicating that there is water inside of the fuel. So the correct measure to take in this scenario is to continue sumping the tank until there's no water present for at least several sumps.